Iowa City, where golf is such a great pastime, it might well have been named Hole in One Wood. Yes, it's time to spend another 30 minutes with the low who puts a high in your viewing entertainment. With us today are guests who represent a melange of song, dance, drama, and mirth. Visiting us from New York City are Paula Stewart and Swen Swenson, veterans of a host of Broadway shows, including Wildcat, in which they appeared together. And now, here's your insouciant man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. I love that word, insouciant. Well, <laughs> what does it really mean, David? I know. Likeable, little, whatever. Hello, Paula Stewart. Hi, Skip. One of Broadway's stars. I don't like this. Today is Broadway, and you brought a very dear friend with you. Swin Swinson, who is a great dancer, actor. How are you? I'm just fine. You both look great in yellow and red and everything else. Hey, tell me, Paula, what are you doing in town? I understand you are decorating Lucille Ball's house. Right. Is that right? Right. You mean you're not performing anymore? No. No, I haven't performed in quite a while. Really? No, at least for 10 minutes at least. <laughs> <laughs> All those great shows you did on Broadway, Wild Cat with Lucille Ball. You played her sister in that, didn't you? Right. Tell me about that day, those days anyway. Well, let's see. The most memorable thing about it was that I met Lucy. Uh -huh. And I had the opportunity to work with her uh -huh. and also to introduce her to her husband, her present husband. Gary Norton? Morton. Norton. Morton. Really? Gary Morton. That's right. You were married to a comic, right. Jack Carter. Right. Yeah, you were Mrs. Carter for how long? Uh, about seven years, but uh -huh. I'd much rather talk about my first okay. husband. Okay, good. <clears throat> that so was Bert Bacharach. Bert Bacharach. Well, we'll right. get back to that in a minute. Okay. But tell me about uh, Wildcats and, and how did you uh, do uh, how did you know Gary uh, through uh, well, Jack? Well, Gary uh, Gary and uh, Jack Carter were good friends, uh -huh. and um, uh, I was looking for somebody for Lucy because she was separated from Desi at the time, uh -huh. and. Um, she really needed somebody who's tall and good looking and uh -huh. had a lot of fun and, uh -huh. and uh, you know, had a great sense of humor. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And Gary filled the bill. Uh -huh. And uh, she wasn't looking to meet anybody at the time. She was just working hard in the, in the show. Uh -huh. And uh, I just knew that she needed to relax a little and to have a little fun because she was working too hard. Uh -huh. So I suggested to Jack Carter uh -huh. um, that I thought Gary Morton would be a fabulous date for her. Uh -huh. And he said, you got to be kidding. Uh -huh. And I said, no, I know he's great. So they got together, and they've been together now, I guess, uh, I was wondering how years. Lucy met Gary Norton. I, you know, a comic, a nightclub comic, theater comic, and she's a, you know, a film star. And I just wonder how, but through Paula Stewart. Right. Got it. And Swenson, I saw you in a wonderful show on Broadway you did. Right, uh, rides Again? Destry Rides Again. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. wonderful in that. Thank Tell you. me about that. Uh, well, a Tell big, they actually, th that was Dolores Gray and Andy Griffith were the stars of that show. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was some very good uh, uh, roles for the bad men. Uh -huh. And I was one of three bad men. There uh -huh. were bad brothers. Right, right. And our big sequence was a uh, bullwhip number that we danced to, a very uh -huh. dangerous number of uh -huh. three bullwhips going full force on the stage. Uh -huh. And uh, we managed to stop the show every night with You that certainly number. did. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, you were wonderful. And Debbie Reynolds, you have worked with Debbie Reynolds, all these great dancers she's oh, worked yeah. with. I did, uh, I did the film um, uh, What's the Matter with Helen with Debbie. <sighs> I played the gigolo that did the tango with her. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That was a great movie. Oh, yes. Curtis Harrington directed that. Huh? That's right. He's great. He's directing now uh, Robert Stanwyck in a new uh, series. Oh, he is? Yes, he is. Oh, terrific. Great Tony director. Sharmley choreographed the uh, tango. Uh-huh. For us. As a matter of fact, that's where I really learned to appreciate uh, Debbie. Uh -huh. That was a hard-working lady. Is she? To, she was working like 12-hour days in that film. Mm -hmm. I went down for two days during her lunch hour, uh -huh. and Tony choreographed that number. Instead of eating, we did that number on uh -huh. the set, just choreographing it. Yes. Then she had one day off that weekend, uh -huh. and I went to her home. Uh -huh. And uh, immediately, the first thing we had to do was go out and get a tape machine because she'd, lo she'd given hers to the kids. Uh -huh. And we came back to her house and we pushed all the furniture aside in her rec room and we rehearsed all day and then we shot it the following day. Oh, isn't that amazing? Where are you from, Swin? I'm, uh, I was originally born on a farm in Iowa, but I grew up in South Dakota, Sioux Falls, uh -huh. South Dakota. I see. And where are you from, Paul? Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'm from there, too, near yeah. there, Rockford, Illinois. Oh, really? Yeah, you're from Chicago. Right. How did you get in the business? How did you get in Chicago? Well, I was going to Northwestern University, and uh -huh. I was studying in the drama department. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
And, Great school. Oh, it's a fabulous school. Good school. Yeah, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, one of my teachers suggested that I go and audition for a show just as, a, you know, just as an exercise. Uh -huh. And I got the understudy to the lead, and it was a musical. And um, I asked my father if I could, you know, go on the road. And at that time, uh, he didn't think it was such a good idea. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I talked him into it. And I went on the road, and then I ended up in New York. And I never stopped working after You did that. a nightclub act, didn't you, for a while? Yeah, I did a nightclub act. What kind uh, of an act was it? Oh, just um, chanteuse. Chanteuse? Chanteuse, yes. yes. Some impersonations. Uh -huh. You know, the standard Ethel Merman, that sort of thing. Clubs. I right. love the clubs. You work clubs a lot, too? Uh, not that much. I did, early in my career, I did a year at the Lido in Paris. Ah. What right. year was that in? Uh, oh. In the 60s, you would you say? Fifties. <laughs> really? really? It wasn't? Because uh, I was there in the 60s. Yeah. It was wonderful. Well, I had a marvelous experience there was uh, first time I really saw a mesmerizing star who'd come out and totally command the stage was Lena Horne. Lena Horne. And she came in to be a guest about, I think, about two months with us. Really? And it was absolutely fascinating because here's this gigantic, bustling uh, uh, nightclub with food and champagne going. The moment that lady walked out on stage, there was not a sound. Uh huh. I see. And she fell madly in love with a Siamese cat I had at that time. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Josephine Baker. <laughs> yeah, that's I really did. I thought no, Josephine. I met her then. You did? I did too. She was a wonderful lady. And yeah. then another time with Josephine Baker, I was doing a, a nightclub show in New York that um, was to try and revive. Uh -huh. uh, 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 it was an old Broadway show. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, Jackie Gleason was in it. Uh -huh. And uh, Bob Fosse and a number of people, and, and Mamie Van Doren was a sh was a uh, showgirl. Was well, she really? Yes. And we were supposed to do two shows a night, and one was supposed to be Josephine Baker, uh -huh. and the other was supposed to be us. Uh -huh. Well, they had dressing room space, one room, uh -huh. one large room, and then a tiny little room. Uh -huh. So our entire cast dressed in the one room. In one big room. Male, right. female, whatever. Right. right. They reserved this <laughs> for the first show for Josephine Baker, this little room, and we're about to open. Uh -huh. she, arrived at the, she arrived at the theater, uh -huh. she walked in, she took one look at her dressing room, and we never saw her again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, I worked with Josephine Baker in Germany. We left Paris, and this, uh, this uh, Englishman um, agent drove us, and you know, you drive very fast on the autobahns in Germany, right? Right. And they don't have any, uh, how, they don't tell you how fast you can go. Right. So what happened is Josephine Baker was in the front seat, and I was in the back seat, and we were going to do a club date for American Officers Club in Wiesbaden. And we left uh, Paris, and we were on the autobahn, and all of a sudden this guy is going like 140 kilometers, uh, that's like 100 miles, right? And Josephine touched him in the shoulder, just tapped him in the shoulder, and she says, Mr. Patterson, do you have any children? And he says, no. She says, well, I do, and I, I would like to see them again. <laughs> <laughs> That's how di diplomatic she was. She was so nice, you know. Didn't we run into each other over there at that time? In Germany. In Germany, yeah, right? Yeah, Paula, we did. Jack at the yes, time. yes, we, we did. We were doing an act together. Yes, I remember. Comedy act, yeah. right? We were working for all the, uh, the different... Uh, you mean Giesler Gunters and all right, those people, yeah, in right, Germany. Right. I was there in the 60s and the s right. and, and late 70s. Right. Yeah. But tell me something about Little Me. Who was in that? I was in that. That's Little Me, Little Me with Sid Caesar. Sid Caesar, oh, right. And Virginia Martin. Yeah. That's where I, I, I worked with Bob Fosse. He'd seen me in a play uh -huh. previous to that off Broadway. And they were having difficulty in casting this one particular role. Uh -huh. And he remembered this uh, cocky character I played in, in Ulysses and Nighttown, a character called Blazes Boylan. And he said, It's just an idea. Would you like to come in and mm -hmm. check that we're having great difficulty with his role? Uh -huh. So I went in and, um, and I auditioned for it, and it went over excellent. They uh -huh. gave me the song of the show, which was I've Got Your Number, to learn, and come uh -huh. back with that the next day and uh -huh. do that. And with that, I was hired. And I was later told by Carolyn Lee and Cy Coleman that the day I auditioned, that song was being thrown out of the show. So that I had saved it, and they said it was one of their biggest money makers of all the time. Everybody <gasps> recorded that song. Uh, it was a great number. Yeah. Oh, right. it was great, great. Well, and Fosse had did such brilliant choreography for it. He said, he said when we rehearsed, he says I'm very difficult, and he had uh -huh. a terrible reputation at that time. And everybody like what frightened like, of him. Like you what? Know? Oh, he Jeez. blew a whistle, you know, instead of saying <laughs> stop and stuff, a uh -huh. police whistle. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he says you're going to hate me. You know. But he wanted perfection. Oh, absolutely. He? That's brilliant. So it's not really. No, and when we started to work. He worked all day with the rest of the cast, and I would go in and work with him about four or five hours at night, uh -huh. starting to create this number. And he says, we've never done 
He says, we've all seen female strippers, he says. I've uh -huh. got this idea. If it doesn't work, we throw it out. Uh -huh. We'll try and do a classy male strip uh -huh. without really stripping. Yes. But amusing and funny. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we started working on this. Well, he, it, the two of us gelled so well that I'd start getting into the number and start singing some of the lyrics, and he'd fall apart laughing. Yes. And it just built like that constantly until... Finally, opening night, I had one of the all-time showstoppers in theater history, and I could count, I played it for two and a half years. I said, this kind of a number does not come along. Mm -hmm. And I could count on stopping the show dead every single night with that number. Oh. Paula, Bert Batrack, let's get back with him now. Oh, well. Yeah, you were married to him, right? Right. Well, when, when I met Bert, he was a serious um, student at... Um, NYU or someplace who's studying uh -huh. serious music and he was my accompanist he was yeah and I took him by the hand and got him his first record contract at Paramount music You're kidding and me. and since then it's been kind of history uh -huh. we've remained friends he's the only one of my ex-husbands I'm friendly with <laughs> <laughs> How many husbands do you have, Paula? Oh, just three. Three? Right, that's Any it. other hobbies, darling? <laughs> I've been through all three of them. You have? I met her when she was with Bert. How long you two known each other? Well, You've actually, known <laughs> I've known Sven longer than any of my oh, husbands. Oh, really? Yes, and we've, uh, we've done everything except get married, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. We've raised dogs together. Uh -huh, we've uh -huh. collected antiques together. We've and now she's <laughs> decorating my house in New York. You both live in New York. You both live in New York, yeah. Right. Well, we're kind of bi-coastal. Uh -huh. We both have uh, residences here yes, and there, yes. and Swen has a beautiful place in New York and, and here. What kind of a man is Bert Batrack, really? What? I mean, oh, he's really? wonderful. Is he's, he? Yes, he's very sweet. He's very... Uh, he's loving, I understand. Yes, he Giving is. Yes, he is. He's, uh -huh. um, and I understand they're very happily married now. He and um, Carol Bayer Sager. Uh -huh. right. uh -huh. um, he's writing some great songs for her, too, isn't he? Right. They're both doing wonderful uh, together. Yeah. yeah. But you miss Broadway? I mean, you're into decorating now, Paula Stewart. Look well, at you. I'll tell you, uh, yes, I, in one sense, I miss uh, performing. I don't think anybody ever gets over wanting to perform. Once you're a performer, you always. Uh, am I right? Right. But tell me something. This, you're in here with Lucy's house. You decorated her house. No, that was That's her New York apartment. Oh, this is her New York that, apartment? Right. That was last year, her New York apartment. Ah, can we get this? Look oh, at this. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a the fabulous seal. apartment. And oh, uh, now I'm nice? redoing her house here in Beverly Hills. Was a complete okay, that's her. Look at that. How beautiful. Let's look at that. Isn't that lovely? Is there another page, Bob? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you shorten that camera over All there? All right. Here, go ahead. You take it. Well, the room that I'm that I like the most is you her bedroom. I don't know if you can get a good shot of well, it. Well, we just show it in this camera All right. right here. This one? Yeah. Okay. That's the bedroom that I oh, like. That's it's, the bedroom. It's all over pattern on everything. Oh, that's it's beautiful. really beautiful and uh -huh. lavenders and beiges. Uh -huh. I don't think which are beautiful be colors for her. She has an apartment in New York. Right. And how, you're here decorating her house now. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. Tell me about the house. How's, how's her house well, here now? Well, the doing? house is... What are you doing to it? Oh, I'm do completely redoing it. We're, we've almost finished with the downstairs, and now we're almost finished with the upstairs. The next thing I have to do is do her, her master bedroom and the bathroom. Redo, redo she it. She a big house. Oh, yes, it's huge. Is it really? Yes, oh, yeah. How many rooms does she have? Oh, God, I think it's maybe about... It's got to be at least 10,000 square feet. Oh, is it? I make a joke about it. I say sometimes they can't find me. They have to send out a search warrant to find me in the back, <laughs> in the guest house. <laughs> she seems happy with Gary, doesn't she? Oh, they're very happy. Are it's they? It's a wonderfully happy marriage, yeah. Are they? That's, an, you know, another one of my How hobbies. How do you feel? putting people together. Me too. I do that too. Do you? I do that yeah. too. You feel good about that, don't you? Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. matching people. Matchmakers are called. Right. Yeah. But you do a lot of people's houses. Who else do you do? Well, I'm going to be doing the Pointer Sisters' houses. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've just helped them uh, find uh, beautiful homes in Malibu, uh -huh. and um, we're going to be starting on that in a couple of weeks. Uh huh. Yeah. That's great. Do you like California, Paula? I love California. Swen, you do. Here for so I'm long. crazy about. Are that. you really? We're oh, a Broadway I miss star, it. but how can you? Really? I like. Well, I get very annoyed at P at New Yorkers who have died in the wool and, and yeah. put down Los Angeles. I don't put it down. It's to me. I just. I think it's. You can't even compare them. They're just two whole Compe other worlds. Yeah. And I love to go to both of them. Uh huh. True. 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 And I have a wonderful house here. That's. I. It's the only city I know of in the world where I've ever been that I can live in a house that I feel like I'm in the country. And I'm in the heart of the city. Uh huh. I'm at the top of Angelo Drive in a cul-de-sac. There's no noise. Uh huh. And I have a view that it opens up every night like a jewel box of the entire city of How Los lovely. Angeles out uh -huh. of every window. How lovely. And in, but in five minutes, I'm in my car, and I'm at Sunset Boulevard in Beverly Hills Hotel. Mm. You've done a lot of films, haven't you? No, not that many films. I've done quite a bit of television some years uh, back. Acting. 
acting, acting and singing and dancing the works. Uh -huh. But you're basically a dancer, though, aren't you? I was. I'm doing more acting now and more singing. You are getting into, uh, into mm -hmm. acting now. I'm working on a, a uh, project right now, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> I premiered it a year ago in Connecticut uh -huh. of an entire evening of Bertolt Brecht and Kurt Weill. Oh, yes. And uh, I directed it, and uh, I co-authored uh -huh. putting all of their works together. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's an entire evening of uh, their music and then Brecht's uh, poetry and uh -huh. his diaries. Uh -huh. And it's very now, it's, uh, it's, it's very gutsy and... Uh, um, and the hip generation is getting onto it now. David uh -huh. Bowie uh, did an entire album, Baal, of their work. Uh -huh. And I understand one of the film studios here has gotten the rights mm -hmm. to Three Penny Opera, and they're talking about Bette Midler and Sting uh -huh. and uh -huh. people like that. David Bowie, he's a good actor. I oh, think yes, he's, I think he's an excellent, excellent actor. He has proved his... He have. Paula, you don't do any films at all? You're not interested in someone... Say, Paula Stewart. Oh, if somebody, you know, absolutely insisted I would do it. But I have to tell you something, Skippy. I made my mind up after a couple of years on Broadway, which I considered a prison sentence. Because I, even though I right. loved doing the shows, right. I never was out of work. And I was constantly working. And, you know, it's a very dedicated kind of life. My energy is daytime energy. And naturally, I'd have to save my energy up for every evening's performance. Yes. And um, I found it very confining. I need to be up and doing things, uh -huh. and I need to be out. And the decorating and building houses uh -huh. and all that kind of thing is much more suited to my temperament. I mean, I, I loved um, performing. There was uh -huh. you know, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But um, I also used to say, you know, I really like money more than applause. I see. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand you collect fine arts. I do, and so does Swen. And you both do. And high camp things. What does high camp things mean? I heard uh, that high camp things. What's high camp? I mean, uh, you collect fine things, but high camp type of things. Funny things, is that, is that or what? Well, out of the way, or un of, un un unusual Unusual things. things. Right. I see, I see. That's uh, an English expression, right. high camp. Yeah. Well, a high camp type of thing is something that you really have no, there's no real use for it. Uh -huh. It's just something that is uh, unusual. Now, Swen is uh -huh. uh, a collector of one of the greatest, he has one of the greatest collections of Carousel figures. Carousels. Yeah, nice. I was probably the first collector of those figures. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And back when I started collecting, of course, they were they were not expensive. And now uh -huh. they're up in they go up as high as a single piece has been sold for fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Oh, really? Like for instance, he's got a peacock <coughs> uh -huh. or a, a chicken that's as big as this room. <laughs> really? <laughs> and ten people Dragons sit on it. and uh -huh. giraffes, tigers. I have a magnificent uh, Denzel tiger in my bedroom uh -huh. in, in New York. Uh -huh. And they're all hand carved, and I knew back in those days uh -huh. this is an is a finished art. Uh -huh. They are all have died and passed away, uh -huh. and these things must be saved. Everybody thought I was insane because yes. I would get a new animal, I'd bring it home to my little cold water flat, and I'd throw out the chair, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'd throw out the, f and there was no place to sit. You had to uh -huh. sit on an animal, yes. or I'd pick one of the little dogs running around. <laughs> But you I saved them very often because people were cutting their heads off and making uh -huh. lamps out of them uh -huh. and throwing the body away. Yes, yes. And uh, I would even buy figures sometimes just to save them. Uh huh. She loves to fly. I bet they told me that you fly. Yes, I love to fly, and, and Swen hates it. He, I do too. You know, I do never too. get in a plane. He'll uh, only go on in a in a train. She's you taking don't fly? my dogs back to New York. Yeah. You're kidding, Swen. You don't fly? No, I despise it. I hate freeways, but I do fly. I have to fly, but oh, I do. And I love ships and trains. Me too. I love ships. Civilized. Yeah, I like it that there too. <laughs> you know, I love it too. Tell me about flying. What do you? Well, the thing I like about it is that you can get up there, you know, and away you fly from the world. The, you, you fly big planes? Or oh what? yes, I can fly uh, anything from. Uh, I've been checked out in uh, double-engine planes. I've uh -huh. flown jets before with uh -huh. the with the co-pilot yes, there. Yes, yes. But uh, I started out when I was 15. Uh -huh. I got my license when I was 17, uh -huh. and had my first crash when I was 18. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you did have a crash? Oh, I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had um, I had engine failure on the takeoff, uh -huh. and from a thousand feet, I had to land into um, an overgrown field. Uh -huh. And of course, it hit the front page of the uh, Chicago Tribune. Uh -huh. And of course, I was out. Uh, I was pinned to an SAE, and I was out moonlighting with, with a Sigma Chi. Uh -huh. So I lost both the plane and my boyfriend. Uh -huh. <laughs> You've been married four times, you say? No, no, three. 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 Any children? Yes, I have a son. Oh, you do have Jack a son. Carter, yeah. By Jack Carter. Right. He's 19. He's going oh. to UC Santa Barbara. I met him. Yes. yes he's I'm gorgeous. Yes, he is. And yeah. he's going to be an actor. No, he's not. 
I understand. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, he David? Did he say, actor? Jack said that he's going to be an actor? Well, I told Jack. him he better get a business education <laughs> first. <laughs> then he can be an actor. They I told him if he wants to be an actor, uh -huh. he has to promise me that he'll only be an actor for a couple of years, and then I want him to own the studio. Uh, I see. <laughs> Jack, Jackie, uh, uh, Jackie Gleason. Tell me about Jackie Gleason. You've worked with him. You've I've been worked on with your him. shows of shows with Sid Caesar. Tell me about Jackie Gleason and Sid Caesar. Uh, well, I, I worked. I worked first with uh, Jackie Gleason in that uh, a nightclub I was telling you about. This was before Jackie Gleason had his comeback. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, he was kind of down and out in those days. When but was he this came when? through, when? it was called when? Billion Dollar Baby, a revival of an old 20s show. Uh -huh. And uh, so I knew him then. And then, strangely enough, a few years later, uh -huh. he was doing his big, successful Jackie Gleason show. And at its right. peak, when it was his most glamorous with, you know, 32 dancers and yes. showgirls, and that, that's yes. when I worked for a year there. Uh -huh. I was brought in, and I was in the chorus of that day, in those Did days. Did you know Honey Merrill? Who was Jackie's uh, yeah, I knew lady, yeah. and she married uh, Dick Roman after. Yeah. Honey, she was honey. a dancer. Yeah, yeah. do you know her? No, I, sure. I knew his, I was his, his also current on the wife. Show. I used to play the Clorette girl. I didn't know that. Yeah, you, you did. Know, the, the, the breath thing. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. I see. What kind of a guy, Jackie Gleason? Oh, is? he's a uh, incredible energy. Uh huh. Very talented man. He knows everything that's going on in that stage. You know, I mean, he had to be conducting, he, yeah, acting, yeah. singing the, the the works, and a master at. It was marvelous to uh -huh. watch. That development, in him. and I think I still to this day I am crazy about uh, Jackie Gleason. His entertainment. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He and Art Carney just I still roll with laughter. There's when a, I you watch just them. named a guy who's very very funny. Brilliant. Yeah. Is he? He is. That's where he really yeah. is. Art Carney is just brilliant. And that was just, like an incredible. But Sid Caesar is another one. Though. Sid you Caesar is a get... fascinating man. I had the same experience with him. Like, I did the last year uh -huh. of his famous show of shows. And that's where, uh, you know, Sid was at his absolute peak. Uh -huh. And uh, it was a fascinating man, and, uh, and he was surrounded by these incredible writers and, you uh, know, Doc Simon. But he was, uh, he, was, uh, he was a little disturbed. He had anxiety attacks a lot. Oh, indeed. He? But he's yeah. the first person that'll ever uh, 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 will admit it. Yes, yes, yes. And then years later, when I did, uh, in the 60s, when I came to do um, Little Me with him, uh -huh. that, uh, that was Neil Simon's first... Uh, I saw you in that. You were wonderful. Thank you. It's a great show. Oh, I love yes. that show. It was one of the funniest shows ever yeah. written. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I remember when I went over to London to do it with an all-English cast, and I, they had already been in rehearsal, and I knew my part, and so I got to take the ship. You know, I didn't have to fly over there in an airplane. <laughs> 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 Did you entertain on the ship while you went over? Oh, no. Free I voyage. never entertain. No? Okay. I'm terrified of entertaining. <laughs> on the ship? <laughs> oh, any place. <laughs> Only on a stage. <laughs> That's the only place I feel safe. <laughs> okay. The only time, in fact, the only time I think I have ever performed at a party was in London, uh -huh. and Judy Garland got me to sing I've Got Your Number. She got me up in this party at her opening night party, but this was after everybody else had left, and there was only performers there, uh -huh. Liza and Peter Allen, all uh -huh. these, uh -huh. and they were all performing, including Judy, and she was she was the best audience all. She uh, just, she's great, isn't she? Oh, she was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. I, I met her in Hong Kong. I met her years ago when she came back from Australia, just before she got sick or in Hong Kong. Oh, she and they brought Peter Allen back to America. That's when they brought him back to America. Well, she was in bad shape in London when I knew her. Yes. In like, fact, she had me, she called me up the night before her opening at the Palladium, and she made me promise, because she was so weak, she said, if I get in trouble in the uh -huh. performance, she said, you've got to promise me that you'll get up on the stage if I call you and <laughs> sing I've Got Your Number. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had to promise her. I'd uh -huh. never been so terrified uh -huh. in my life uh -huh. going to that performance. I thought, at any moment, they're going to call me up there, I'll <laughs> die. <laughs> she was another Ethel Merman. She, she stayed up there until she did it. But she, she came backstage to see me shortly before that performance. She'd come uh -huh. to see the show Little Me there. And she came backstage to see me, uh -huh. and she didn't arrive. Uh -huh. And I finally, I, said, I called down to find, I sent my dresser down to find out what had happened. And she'd gotten backstage, and I was, my dressing room was up one flight of stairs, and she couldn't make it. And she turned around. That's how weak she was. And uh -huh. it, yet she went out to perform a uh -huh. few nights later in that Palladium uh -huh. show and knocked them dead. Amazing lady. She was a great lady, wasn't mm. she? Great lady. Did you know talent. her? Oh, yes. You sure. She was a great lady. Hey. You two people have known a lot of great stars. <laughs> the funny thing is, we've both done the same shows. I did Little Me with Donald O'Connor. Right. I did, also did right. it with Jack Carter. 
and a lot of other shows like the Sid Caesar show uh -huh. and, and uh, the Jackie Gleason show. We originally Gleason met show. in Guys and Dolls. That's right. Is that how you met, really? Yeah. In Guys Summer's Dolls. And yes. we've all we've done the That's same right. shows, and very rarely have we worked together. Uh -huh. But right now we're we're working on raising dogs. Yes. Raising you know, dogs. I'm so happy. They're doing my apartment. <laughs> is she, is she's doing your house. Yeah. Too? Is Wonderful. She? She's putting fabulous color into my house in New York. I've always had plain white walls because uh -huh. I have so much artwork. Uh -huh. How, did, put how do they contact you, Paul? Are you listed yeah. in the phone or what? Well, I'm Just listed in the Manhattan Directory. In Man I Paula figured, Stewart? Right. That's it? Right. Paula Stewart, right. Manhattan Directory. It's a little more difficult out here. You have to stand in the middle of the street yeah. and yell very loud. Do you know something? <laughs> I'm so happy I have you two people on the show. Oh, I'm I mean, right. I've been having Hollywood stars all the time, but today I have two wonderful Broadway people, and I mean, really, people that know Broadway. And I'm very happy. And you've known a lot of stars and worked with a lot of big Broadway people. I'm very, very happy to have you both, really. Thank you. Right. You know there is a restaurant in town uh, you should go see. It's, it's, you know, Schwab's closed, right? Right. There's a new place called Theodore's Cafe in uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, and it's where all the actors are going now. It's a new Schwab's. It's oh, a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, okay. it's a lot of fun. A lot of actors are going Great. there. Oh, it's okay. a lot of fun. Yeah, we will. Well, Paula. Thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You'll have to have us back again, I right? I certainly will. And yeah. Lucy, this is a good show to do. <laughs> Is she going to do my show? I think she will. I hope she does. I'd love to have this. Thank you, Skip. Delightful. Swenson, I love you. I think you're marvelous. Oh, I think you're a great you. entertainer. And finally, I met you. Yes. Yeah, I think you're Swen Swenson. Thank right. you. And Paula Stewart. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Skip. Oh, Wally, we've really been looking at Hollywood today. Thank you. Broadway. <laughs> we can just talk. <laughs> we can just...